What's up, party people? The Angular team in the building. Mark Thompson, Mr. Jeremy Elborn, back for the gaming stream. Jeremy, what's going on? Oh, you're muted. Did you did you try to unmute me? Because mm -hmm. I unmuted me, and I think you muted me. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to unmute you, so that way you'd be ready to like just come in hot on the microphone. That's so funny. So Zelda is going on. Zelda mm -hmm. is, is all... I've really been doing lately. <laughs> Tell me all about it. Tell me about your experience. Like, how has it been going? Oh, it's wonderful, right? It's everything that Breath of the Wild made great and more. I don't want to spoil anything, though, right? Sure. So let's let's give the audience like a comparison between that and let's say something like because I feel like God of War Ragnarok was everything that God of War twenty eighteen was, but like more and better. Is it that same type of translation over or is it different? Yeah, it's a true sequel in that sense where you have, you know, it's not obviously you don't have all the same abilities and everything. The puzzle mechanics are different in Tears of the Kingdom, but it is evolved. It mm -hmm. is more sophisticated, more powerful, more, just more. Is it a continuation in story from the last game? It is. It is a direct sequel. Oh, 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 continuation and story. That's interesting to me because I always feel like with Zeldas, they're, they're, they're kind of like anecdotal almost or like uh, like standalone stories. Where mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, something happened. Ganon's back in some form and now we must defeat Ganon, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, it's not God of War in terms of narrative, but mm -hmm. I will say that this one actually has probably the most... I'll say the most involved story or narrative of any Zelda game I've played, which is okay. almost all of them. Okay. That sounds good. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. I think I know which Josh this is. And this is really funny. I can't wait to see y'all make Skyrim in Angular in less than an hour. What's up, made, Josh? If we made Skyrim in Angular in an hour, it would just be a game where you go and you bring blocks of cheese to one place. Ooh, I feel like that's a thing. I feel like we should just make that. I hope it's ultimate doom. Scott, I'm going to tell you something. Doom Eternal music, uh, the original soundtrack to Doom Eternal is what I use to listen to most times when I'm writing code because of the driving like kind of themes. And I love the way it sounds. And it's a really, really good soundtrack. So check out Doom Eternal soundtrack. Oh. Mm -hmm. Are you are you playing anything, Mark? Or are you just too busy with work? Because we all uh, we, we yeah. just came back from uh, Google I/O extended in Miami. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm way too busy. However, however, so Jeremy has been trying to get me to get Tears of the Kingdom and like install it and start playing. So friends, <laughs> he's been a really bad influence. I'm like, I don't have time to like do both. But I I'm going to be. So I was just in Miami. Right, just like Jeremy said. So now I'm gonna I'm getting ready to go to Amsterdam for Google I/O Extended Amsterdam. That is a like 12 hour flight. I will be playing Zelda. It's either Zelda or I'll be playing Mass Effect. Like replaying that. It's either one of the two. It's probably gonna be Zelda though. Yeah, it's a really good cookie place in Amsterdam. Oh, please send me all the links. Yeah. Don't send me anything fun to do because I'm not gonna do anything fun. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't like to go on vacations without my family and do fun stuff because mm -hmm. I feel very guilty. Lot, lots of like parental guilt. Well, I've got <laughs> but food, listen, it's not my problem if they don't get to experience their food. Ah, All sorry. right, let's think. We're gonna, let's just shout out to some of our people in the building. Yeah, let's see who we got here. We got Kevin. Let's go Kevin, good to see you as always. All right. Amartya, good to see you. Welcome to the party. Gabriel, what's up? Hector, what's up? Marcus, what's up? Good to see you. Nuno, I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of ads in the streets. Listen, I like that energy. <laughs> uh, Victor, what's going on? Josh, I call you Josh D for now, Josh Developer, because there's a second Josh in the chat. Uh, Josh, but we know you are the Josh that we all appreciate and value. We value all of you all, but Josh, you know, you got a special place with us because you're always hanging out. Hey, what's going on, Jihad? Hada, how are you? Good evening. 
All right, let's make some rectangular uh, new. <laughs> yeah. We already got questions in here. Okay, so let's get started. So this yeah. this month, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to get back to our roots. Yeah, and we're going to play, play games. games. Yeah. I got tired of not playing games on stream for so long. So my graphics card is still, uh, I still haven't replaced my graphics card in my PC. And so I'm going to play a game that my I can handle without a GPU, which is Stardew mm. Valley, uh, which fits nicely into our bucket. So this is also a game I can just kind of very casually play while uh, answering questions. All right, we're going to take some votes. Uh, what what do we want the name of uh, our farmer to be here? I put it in chat, friends. What is the name of our farmer? Let us know. Let us know what the name of our farmer is. What kind of farmer uh, do you work? And we've got to give him a chance to, to type it in there. Riaz, hello, hello. Andre, what's going on? Hey, you received a signal. I like that energy. That's what's up. Let's go, Michael Faith in the building. Michael's always kicking it with us. I like, <laughs> I like Doom Guy. <laughs> Doom guy, I like that. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, let's do Doom guy. That's that's All pretty right. funny. We're gonna do. Let's do a forest farm. Or what? Where does Doom guy? Oh wait, Jeremy, you have someone of your after your own heart. This is on the best of all time list. Jeremy loves this game. Yeah. This is uh this is in my like maybe top five games of all time. This is my most played game on Steam. Uh, yeah and what's your other most played game on steam uh terraria <laughs> right which Finding i thought i was getting this game when i bought terraria i thought i was getting this and i do not like terraria because i want i had different expectations and i know it's my fault that i don't like terraria but uh all right so you're from mars favorite thing pancakes pancakes hard to go wrong with pancakes in life so our animal preference is dog, and nobody gets a say in that. <laughs> dog. Uh, and can I just like, is there a randomize here? I'm just gonna like totally randomize this just by like clicking. That's good. Yeah, do it. That's a really nice way to do that. <laughs> well, let's see. We got somebody uh, first time here. Let's go. The code angle. Uh, what's up? Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. First time here. I think I said hi to you already. Oh, Freddie. Welcome. Yo, Moo. What up, MT? Good to see you. Welcome to the party. All right. So let's get. Oh, any recommend any recommendations of games involving dragons but don't give any spoilers uh maybe dragon's dogma is a good game god of war ragnarok has some dragons in it uh check those out it's actually not coming through too loud but if it is that's fine uh is this code in any repo we didn't make this i wish we did hector we'd be not working anymore we'd be rich um we did not make this yeah it is genuinely astonishing that this game is primarily built by one person over the course of so many years. Like, how many years do you think it took the developer to uh, make this? Oh, I can't remember. There is actually, like, you can go read up about it, and it's just, like, a wild story. Yeah, Fez was made by a single developer. Um, you know, speaking of Fez, I actually... So there's this movie called The Indie... It's called Indie Game. I think it's the name of the movie. It's a docu documentary. And I used to watch that movie like probably like once a week to stay motivated to build indie games. And I was building some. And then I, I could never get past that like 80, 20. You know, we do like 80% of the work. And then that last 20 is the hardest to finish. And I could just never get past that last like 20%. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, man, I love this game. I don't see. I'm doing it. The only reason I'm it's not dangerous for me to start doing this and playing this is uh because Zelda is here. All right, man. Open yet. Right, so here. tell the people what this game is even about. Uh we're just making a farm. As soon as the general store opens, I'm gonna go and bar buy some parsnip seeds so I can plant some parsnips, which are a spring crop. Oh, I got a question for you. 
if you are an Animal Crossing person, is this game for you? Uh, it is like there are similarities between this and Animal Animal Crossing, but I think this game is kind of more mechanically rich. Okay. Because I'm trying to think about if I should tell my uh, wife about this game because she loves Animal Crossing. Oh yeah, she probably like this game. Uh, do we have any Angular questions? Should we should we talk we, about? We Angular should questions? take some questions. Okay. All right, friends. If you have questions about the framework, about the team, kind of we can answer. Uh, but if you got Angular questions between Jeremy and I, we will answer your questions and put them in the chat. Somebody asked early on. Let me see if we got any star questions. Uh, somebody said. Can you talk about modulelessness? I think that was one of the questions. Um, standalone components, modulus. I was like, yeah. So I, I think we do modulus. Like, I think uh, one thing that I actually have heard in the streets, Jeremy, and you can help us to like clarify too. When it comes to like the future of modules in Angular, like, can you help clarify our stance on where modules fit into the picture? So for, well, I'll clarify what we're talking about ng modules here, right? Yeah, like obviously specifically ng modules, not, ES, uh, not ESM. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we haven't made any like final decisions yet, but we do think that standalone is the direction of the future, right? Because it, you know, it enables a lot more uh, optimization and how we can do builds and things like that. And it's just generally uh, kind of a more straightforward, more optimizable approach to um, to doing applications. And it also like, you know, it makes, there's a, a level of indirection we have today with mm -hmm. components, right? So where say you wanna use map button, right? You have to both import the map button component or module, and then you also have to use, um, like you import it the, with the like ES import, and then you also import it into Angular, and it's kind of annoying that you have to do that twice. And it would sure be nice if you could just do it once, right? You've seen in like Vue, React, Svelte, like you just import the thing and you use it. Um, is there a plan for something like that? Like, are we thinking about how we could accomplish that, or is that not possible with our current structure? Uh, we've been thinking about it. Um, we don't, you know, again, like, this, you know, we have lots of conversations and lots of ideas for the future and many of them never really go anywhere. Some of them do, right? Like, obviously we, we, uh, are doing lots of stuff to evolve the framework with signals and other things. Um, and so really this is just kind of in the phase of like, we are thinking about like, what are our options in the future? And, you know, maybe next year it's something we would think about doing, but nothing is really decided yet. Yeah. Right, we're gonna plant some parsnips. Okay, good, good, good. All right, awesome. Uh, Josh D says, "Can you tell us the steps to apply Angular position at Google?" Uh, uh, uh so there there isn't really a system for things like that. Um, yeah. I should have bought more parsnips. Uh, one, two, three, four. All right, I'm just gonna water these. Um, yeah, the way it works at Google is you just kind of apply for general software engineer positions at Google, and Google uh puts people where they have openings um mm -hmm. and yeah there's not really a specific way to like can i apply for a specific uh like like i guess this is this is a little fuzzy because sometimes there are openings for specific positions in specific locations but um, a lot of the time it's just like you apply to be a software engineer and then you get assigned to where there, there are openings for that so it's not really something that uh, is uh, that I know you could do right now. Sure. Here's a question I've seen before, and I kind of know the answer to this. Uh, so can we someday see any official certification from Angular? I've thought about this because one of the things that I do on a team is I'm really interested in our learning journey and our education and stuff like that. So I've thought about what this could look like. I have not come up with an answer. Um, I don't know if this is possible because of us being like an open source product. So it's a little weird. So yeah, I don't know what the answer to this is. Jeremy, any insight on like a, rec uh, cert a certification? Yeah. I mean, I would say realistically, I don't think we would do any sort of like formal certification. Yeah. Um, I think we, we would just be more focused on uh, like providing great educational content. Oh, I bought one extra parcel. 
it's neat. It's neat. Uh, um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of you know work that goes into creating a program like that and maintaining it over time. So that's true. I think we're, we're like we're more focused on making the product. That that is like that is Angular, making the framework, making the components, and all that yeah. stuff. And I I don't know that um, we would even be the best people to make a certificate program like that. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good point. No, this is not Angular, Victor. <laughs> no, this is just a game that we're just having some fun playing. Uh, the live coding challenges are uh, not not for this one. We'll do we'll do another one maybe in uh, July. Jeremy and I will think about some ways to do it. Um, let's see. We have got lots of comments. Invitation. Okay, uh, I did that one. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, so first time coming to the stream, Scott. Thanks so much. What do you work on with Angular? Uh, we'd love to know more about what you're doing. All right. Let's see. Last month. Uh, Oh no, this game, Tiago, this game is not made in Angular. We're just playing right now. Jeremy, I feel like we're just gonna have to like break down and like make a graphical game somehow. But I, I bet, you know what I think we could do? I think we could do a point and click adventure uh, with just the way change detection works and like the stuff like that. I bet we could do like a point and click adventure with some graphics. Uh, we could. Uh, I feel like we can't do that in an hour, though. That feels not like not an hour. It would have to be a multi-stream right. thing where we both like, oh, oh, real-time ideation, guys. So, so team uh, watching, this is real time. Um, Jeremy, it could be fun if you and I like built a game over multiple like months, like streams, like let's say like four streams, right? And we just like worked on a different feature. But we kept it very like narrow. But you know what I mean? Something we could accomplish in an hour or two. Yeah, like it would be a big undertaking. We have to figure out something fun. We actually felt like building. Right, but it could be fun. Uh, would be Josh, game, what'd you say? I don't know if it would be a game though. Yeah, it could be though. It could be. Josh says he made this game using assembly. Josh, uh, we like that energy. Oh, this is a great question. I'm going to kick us off with this one, and then, Jeremy, uh, please help us uh, get this thing. Uh, could you explain signals implementation? How does compute get kicked by reactive node changing? You want to jump in on that one, Jeremy? Oh, I can try. So, like, there is underneath um, the signal implementation, right, there is basically just a little consumer producer pattern, and the when you are creating signals and creating computed is actually it, you can think of it internally as like they are nodes in a graph and whenever a signal is updated it has the connections to the other nodes of like computed and things that depend on that and i'm gonna sell this little muscle here um and it basically will walk this graph and update things. And obviously there's some optimizations in there, right? There's some memoization, um, but it's like relatively straightforward under the hood, right? Like the complicated parts get into like, oh, like how do you do cleanup? And are there optimizations you wanna make for how you're traversing this graph and things like that. But um, it's really just like, it boils down to when you set the setter or you call the setter on a signal that change is like propagated through the system. Mm -hmm. All right, good old Harvest Moon. No, Donald, this is actually not Harvest Moon. Yeah. This is like a, a spiritual successor to Harvest Moon. Yeah, but good call out. I like that reference. Multiplayer game with Angular in a single thread. Somebody did this about 15 years ago with Angular JS. Someone made a multiplayer Bomberman game. So, Hector, if you look up multiplayer Bomberman Angular JS, you would actually find someone who did that. Uh, Muhammad, you would not use Angular for this type of game. You sh you probably shouldn't. Like, yeah, this, this Angular is not really meant for like a game engine. So I think there are web based game engines that you could try that would give you less pain than trying to like do this in Angular. Yeah, Angular is more for your uh, traditional web based experiences. We're gonna dig through people's trashes. 
Oh man, you know, so the engineers behind this game are coming in hot. Josh, <laughs> I made the transistors and silicon for this game by hand from CSAN. <laughs> All right, that's funny. Okay, how can I be an Angular uh, developer expert and maybe get inside Google Angular developer expert team? So we have it's called the Google Developer Expert Program, and the way that you get into it, Victor, is that you have to get uh, referred by a GDE right now. So you have to find someone else who's already in the program who can refer you, and then there's an interview process. And some of the, the guidelines that we're looking for are people in the community who are you know, getting involved with Angular. Like, how are you demonstrating your expertise? Are you giving meetup talks? Are you mentoring people? Are you writing blogs or documentation? Are you maintaining a library? Like, there are lots of ways to do it, but I'm just giving you some examples of things that people have done that have been successful to be a part of the GDE program. So, but first, you got to get involved in the community, and then you can find other Angular GDEs and then help and uh, have them be able to like know about your work and the things that you're doing. And then, yeah, that's that's like how the path gets started. Did I miss anything, Jeremy? Uh, that all sounds right to me. Yeah. Standalone is really nice. We think it's really nice too. We are not deleting modules because there are lots of applications that still use modules. Material, still use, Angular Material uses modules. So modules is like gonna be around, right? But as Jeremy said, the future though, the direction that we're thinking about is standalone, you know, it's like when you're starting out. Oh, good question. I, Yvonne, how do how do the signals handle errors? Will there be any guides in the Angular docs? Uh, yeah, of course. There will be documentation for all of this. Um, everything gets documented before we release it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jeremy, somebody asked me. Well, they didn't ask me directly, but they asked us to do something. They were like, what about... What about a uh, tour of heroes done with signals? Uh, yeah, I mean, at some point we all will almost certainly um, either update tour of heroes to be based on signals, or we will have kind of a newer experience that is based on signals. One of those things. Um, I, I think know. you could probably count on the newer experience based on signals, but I think one thing that could be fun for us to do is maybe we upgraded on stream just to show people how we could do it, how we can convert an existing app. That could be like a, a different, not a, not a, it'll be a non game stream, but that can be fun. Maybe I'll just do another stream and then just like start doing it. And then people can yell at me on the, in the chat, like, you did that wrong, Mark. What are you doing? Uh, very fun stuff. Yeah. Um, Fox Die. Oh, ha. Fox Die. Is that a Metal Gear Solid reference? Fox Die? I think that is. Um, but I like NG modules, they are useful for me. And they are. So you should use them where it makes sense, right? If it makes sense for you, you have a need for them, then you should use them. Okay, let's see. Here. A little more. Oh, Michael Faith asked a great question. Uh, the RFC mentioned the possibility of making the standalone true and signals true, more concise. Any thoughts on what that might look like? I'm actually talking to Alex Rickabaugh right now about what we can do. To do this because that is something that i personally have like a big heart for i want to see a change on how we do that thing so actually talking about it yeah we're still thinking about it nothing again like you'll you'll very rarely get uh on this stream commitments from us of like yes we're gonna do it like this uh like we we will tend to think about things for a long time and then uh share when we're ready Yep. You know how many times I said that on stage in Miami at the Angular uh, talks from all the questions from the audience? They're like, oh, when is this going to happen? And I'm like, when it's ready. Like, that's how we release stuff, when it's ready. And so uh, very nice. Oh, here's a great question. Oh, Alcatraz, welcome back. I recognize your handle from previous streams. Thanks for coming to hang out. Are Vite environment variables being considered for Angular builds? My understanding is that Vite is not used for prior builds. No, it's not for a development only and an experimental mode. So I guess the question is, would that change uh, for that feature? So like, is that something that we're thinking about? Um, are we the best people to answer this, Jeremy? Do you know anything about this? Um, I don't know what the environment variables are. What I can say is uh, Angular CLI currently only uses Vite for the experimental ES build dev server, right? So it is only using Vite for its dev server and not for any of its build capabilities. And so 
if the environment variables are something related <clears> to <throat> its build capabilities, then that wouldn't really be something related. Good question. Let me get an answer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nuno says portfolio is better than six fabrications. Oh, that's interesting. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Hey, I'm good to have you here. How about JSX like syntax in the Angular uh, template? Uh, that's a complicated question. Yeah. <laughs> what does JSX, JSX like mean? Uh, and well, because we have some JSX like syntax. Well, we have like interpolation. Like, really, JSX, what, like, I don't know. This is a very loaded question because, like, sure. what does I mean, JSX I, like mean? It's, a, it's very open to interpretation, right? Do you mean the grammar of JSX, the like a Bacchus now or form of it? Do you mean referencing components um, outside of a string, uh, but you know, with any arbitrary syntax beyond that, right? Is it uh, using not having selector based components? Um, oh, is there, can I not go south here on the beach farm? I don't know. Well, okay. So, Amit, if you're still watching, why don't you go ahead and ask a specific question, and we can see if we can answer it for you. Okay. Here's another question. Sir, kind of another person who comes to the stream. Y'all be hanging out with us. Can we say thank you for that? Because I recognize you as well, Sir. Kind of thank you for coming. Uh, is there any plan to rewrite Angular and the Angular components documentation? No comment. All right, loving Angular V16 <laughs> for a personal and company project. It's been great. Uh, Stephen, so glad to hear that. I'm so glad that it's been great. And thanks for having your company, uh, you know, continue to stay on thing. It's a, oh, David Steele says, you know what I miss from AngularJS? Global pipe. I, you know, honestly, I don't remember what that is. Me neither. I'm like, whoa, what is that? I'm like, I'm one of the very few people on the team who even has any responsibility for like any last Angular JS stuff that's lingering around in Google. Yeah. And I think I, I probably remember it better than most people on the team. And like, I don't, I don't remember what that is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. Hey, Mark. Hi, Josh. Could you explain the role signals have in other Redux and other Redux based libraries like NGRX and NGXS, you wouldn't think signals would phase these libraries out, correct? No, we don't think that they're going to phase the libraries out. So, here are a couple of things for people to consider because I think that we, at first blush, signals seem to solve the same problems as, as like, like reactive systems that are existing, but they don't, right? And so, you got to kind of like separate what we're using signals for and then what those other libraries are really good at. So for example, I, I got a lot of questions this week about where's RxJS gonna fit in the picture versus signals. So signals are synchronous, right, Jeremy? Uh, please uh, correct me on that. That is correct. They are, so that's what I thought. I wanted to make sure, cause I told a lot of people that. And I was like, and somebody challenged me and said, no, it's not. And I'm like, no, they're synchronous. Okay. Like, so if you think about like reactive systems like RxJS, I think those things are really great for unpredictable asynchronous things that are gonna happen at some point, an event or data that's gonna happen at some point, right? So when I, when I call it unpredictable, I don't mean like unstable, I mean unpredictable is in, you don't know when it's going to happen, like a mouse click in your application. You actually don't know when that's gonna happen. And that could be a stream of events that happens over time that you really don't have any like idea about. So that's an asynchronous stream of events. So think about that as a place where you, you have things like NGRX, NGXS, right? Like they use that type of model behind the scenes. That makes sense for them. But then if you have something that's synchronous, you know, in your application that you're going to change the value of and think about how we're using it specifically to help influence change detection, right? Like that's, this is changing our reactivity story, especially around change detection. Versus like saying that this is the way you should like re-architect your application and replace all these other things. And we're, we're talking to these other teams, right? We're actually talking to them to see about integration and where things make sense. Anything else you want to say about that, Jeremy? Or correct no, anything that I've said? Right? Like the, the big thing is like we actually are like even talking regularly to the owners of the state management libraries and working with them to... Uh, figure out how signals fit into all of these stories. And we think it's going to be a really good mesh for everyone going into the future. Okay, wait, this fishing mechanic is so interesting. So you got to keep that bar like 
so you have the one bar that you control. Yeah. And, and then, then what? Move around. How do you know where? You, how do you interact with that? Do you have to like click it at a certain time? You're basically, or what do you just do? Hold, holding down the mouse, and when you push it, it's applying for upward force. And when you let go, it's falling down. And so you're kind of just trying to like balance that to keep it on. Oh, the okay. And a, a single person like worked in this game. That's bananas. Like that's a whole like, you know, few sprints in itself to figure out that type of stuff. Okay, let's see. Uh, here's a good question. How does change detection work in current currently in V16? I read someone writing that we can use on push strategy. What's the benefit we get from that? So um, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Jeremy. I've been talking a lot. Oh yeah, so on push uh, is basically just a setting you can apply that limits the number of change detections that will happen by like limiting the actions that cause change detection. Um, and in particular, it means components will only get marked for needing check um, whenever um, a input changes as a result of a template binding or when um, or when there's an event in that component. Uh, so like, you have the advantage of uh, like just fewer things will cause change detection, but there is a little a bit of extra work you have to do then because there are some things that won't cause change detection in places where you know if you are relying on kind of Angular's default behavior that would another geode. Does that answer the question? <laughs> like, I think so. And the other thing that I want to clarify yeah. for people who are watching and who are using V16, while we do have signals that are in developer preview, this isn't just yet the version of change detection that's like driven by signals. Yeah. So as of in V16, right, change detection is still driven by zones, right? You can use signals um, in that context, but they are not kind of driving the change detection mechanism yeah. fundamentally. Um, and uh, in a future version, that that is kind of the feature you will expect to see is having signal-based components and having a change detection that can be fully driven uh, with signals and without needing to use uh, zones, right? Having zones be optional. There you go. Uh, does Angular have any future plans for service workers? Where does that like PWA service worker story right now? Uh, no, particularly for the time being, like we have the Angular service worker package and it does what it does. And we like, for the most part, service workers are just like kind of a sep like disconnected from Angular, right? Like we're, we're very much focused on the, you know, the template compiler and the runtime of the framework and the developer experience of it. And uh, service worker, it's just kind of this peripheral thing that is, you know, obviously it is something that many web developers will want to use as part of building, you know, web experiences. Uh, but it is not kind of in the core focus area of right. what we are uh, paying attention to right now. Yep. That sounds right. That sounds right. Good, good, good. Lots of good questions. Thank you, friends. Angular plus Babylon JS. It's what I've been doing, uh, exploring web GPU stuff. I don't know what Babylon JS is. I don't either. It sounds like it's a like a um, like you know rasterization, maybe like WebGL, a uh, web GPU. So yeah, the web GPU is kind of the replacement for WebGL, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about that, I think, at uh, I/O this year. There are some conversations about web GPU. Uh, so there's probably a video to talk, that you can learn more about. So if you're in the audience and you're like me, who doesn't have a ton of familiarity with uh, web GPU, I know we have some stuff at Google I.O. this year from the developer keynote that covered some of the stuff that's going on. Let me just look up Babylon JS. Yeah. Mark, did you know that early in my career, I like worked in computer graphics? I kind of vaguely remember that, but tell us more. Tell the streets more about your yeah. computer graphics career. Back when I was in college, I actually was an intern at AMD. That's so rad. Um, I, before that, I even I worked in a kind of like a, a university research lab that did kind of like simulation and training uh, kind of stuff, and like you know, very like college days kind of stuff. Before I I moved over and found I really enjoyed web development a lot. So I haven't really done much with it since college. 
Yeah, so it sounds like we have some very similar like uh, origin stories. I worked in the computer graphics lab as well, and but I did it as a research assistant while I was in graduate school. And mm -hmm. I, I honestly thought that my career was going to be making video games full time. That was my original plan was to make video games like I even took Japanese lessons so I can go to Japan to make video games. So I don't speak Japanese as much anymore. But at one point I, I was speaking Japanese because that was my plan to go to Japan after uh, college. Then I found, you know, what changed my mind? Uh, a, a developer from Warner Brothers Studios did a guest lecture in one of my like graphics classes. And he was so stressed out on like just talking to us for 45 minutes about this game he was working on. And he just looked so burned out and so stressed out and he could barely stay to like talk to us like, yeah, you know, yeah, I, I, I got to go. And this is like on, you know, like in front of the whole class, he's like, yeah, um, here's this game. Yeah, I could do this thing. But okay, I got to go. And I was like, that dude looks miserable. I, gotta, <laughs> I do not want this life. And so then I just moved away from it. But I still have like, I think at some point I will make another game, but it'll be like over a long period of time for a hobby, like to relax me, but not to like profit or anything. Yeah, I, I know how you feel, right? I, I had a similar, like when I was young, I was like, oh yeah, I'm getting into programming and make games. And then as I, you know, was going through college, I, I learned about how absolutely terrible it is to work in the games industry. I'm like, well, what about this web stuff? Right? Yeah. Can I, like, right. can I work in web and maybe someday work at Google? That was my that was actually my dream. Like was that really Google? Yeah. That's now, awesome. Your dream came true. Yeah. And now I, I've been at Google for 11 years and I'm fully jaded by it. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of dreams coming true, like so off camera, Jeremy and I were talking. So as he said, I was at uh Google IO in Miami. And I gave a session on Angular. And back in 2019, before I was a Googler, I had I tweeted that I was going to be on stage at Google I.O. So this week, my dream came true to be on stage at Google I.O., which is like, so there goes two people following their dreams on, uh, you know, on the Internet, which I love. Let's see. Use signals to create a traffic signal simulator. I love this. Only thing I can't think of, Tayambo, also shout out to you. You also are in these streets um, hanging out with us. Where would you use computed? I know where you could use effect, but where would you use computed in a traffic simula signal simulator? I know this is just a, you know, you've been fun, but like, I kind of want to do it, but I just don't know what, how we can make computed a good example there. Hmm, something to think about. Maybe you all know. And if you can think of a good example, I'll make it. I'll make a video about it and I'll give you a shout out. That's a big commitment. <laughs> That's what I'll do it though. If you get a good idea, I'll do it. Um, side projects, mean stack app of an online library for my wife's classroom books. Cool. And Raffle, wow, very cool. Scott, love to hear it. That's amazing. Okay. Let's see. Thoughts on Flutter in the web space. Yeah, uh, Babesh, I think flutter has a very unique opportunity to do some cool stuff with their flutter web i think they made a really smart choice by going into what's called like the element embedding space where you can take a flutter app kind of like a web component style almost and you can embed it into an existing app and then there's a javascript interop that you can use i think that's very cool that you can do that because think about this what could be cool uh, for you in an application let's say that you are Maybe you want to advertise. I got this from Tim Sneath, by the way, from the Flutter team. He put this on Twitter. Uh, maybe you have like a website for your mobile app and you're trying to like advertise it. And then you're like, hey, try it out right now. You could load it in the web right there, right? You could have it loaded. People could try out the app before downloading it to their phones. That's really interesting, like a showcase almost, right? Or like a trial. I'm like, yeah, you want to try more? Boom, download and have your app store links right at the bottom. Some very interesting stuff you could do there. So, can will Angular components also be signal based? Uh, at some point, yes. Like Angular components will support signals. Uh, it's still a little bit fuzzy on what the path to get there will look like, right? Because obviously, we don't want to break people, right? We can't just switch the components to be signals, and uh, you know, people who are depending on those APIs today get broken. That's not something we do. 
Uh, and so we would just have to think about a way to both like enable uh, signals in the components while still providing a backwards compatibility story for all existing people. All right, uh, Gabrielle says, I read that signals still rely on change detection. So how is that signals are moving us apart from zones? Yes, we're not there yet. We're working on it. Well, so the, but, there is actually yeah. a, um, the, there's a, that's a very good question, right? Because uh, even in a fully zoneless scenario, there will still mm -hmm. be um, change detection happening, right? There will still be a point where Angular is looking through the expressions in your component and comparing them to their previous value and updating. And the difference mm. is that signals allow us to be way more granular about those change detections, right? So zones is always a global top-down change detection, and that can get very expensive when you do a lot of them. Whereas with signals, we're able to make it um, that change detection only happens at the view level, where um, view is kind of a, a term that we we use in the internals of Angular. It, it kind of leaks out into user space and things like view child and view children and view ref. Um, but really like a view is like one chunk of template that has been stamped out and rendered. Um, it can be a component, but it can also be embedded views for things like NGIF and NG4. And that is the granularity at which change detection will run in a fully signal-based world. So when something does change, the amount of work that the framework has to do is way less. Got it. That's that's really good even helping me clarify. Thanks for that. Oh, 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 oh. J J R Oslov or maybe J Roslov. Hello everyone. Could you tell tell me why we can't use effect function in after view init? Why can't we, Jeremy? Uh, I mean, you can. Like, it's you probably don't want to. Um, is this a is this a best practices question or is this a? Oh, maybe this person tried it and it didn't work. Uh, Jay Ross, love. Let us know if you tried it and it didn't work. Uh, David, I love Angular JS so much. You got to move on to Angular at some point. Oh, just kidding. I think you mean the same thing, but it's not the same name. So AngularJS is a different product. But if you do love AngularJS, I love it too. There used to be a famous talk of mine about animations in AngularJS that actually got me a job someplace else to do their whole Angular migration to from Ang from uh, JSPs and spaghetti web code all the way to AngularJS, actually, because of this talk that I did. And they were like, hey, let's hire that guy. He sounds smart. And I fooled them. <laughs> All right, let's see. Was the concept of signal technically possible like 10 years ago? Or are signals built on modern web APIs? Um, yes and no, right? So like fundamentally, even the like very idea of like knockout JS, which was you know around a decade ago, is kind of the same idea as signals. I think that the idea has been refined somewhat over the years, and we're also taking advantage of modern web APIs and type systems, and particularly with TypeScript, uh, to provide a like pretty good developer experience on top of that. Um, so one example is that we are taking advantage of the um, mechanism that drives weak ref in order to make cleanup or signals much more ergonomic than we would have been able to do without that feature. Hey, yo, Knockout had the last contribution. What do you think the last contribution was to Knockout? Um, I'm going to like, I feel like it is probably like within the last year, right? I bet there's like somebody keeping the lights on. Well, that's not anymore. But that's pretty close. 2021. Wow. Oh, okay, not far off. I, re you know, one thing I still remember about Knockout was the interactive tutorials online were some of the best I had seen, like any place, and it's still very good. Oops. Okay, let's see. Andre says I'm a genius and I created some games. Thank you. I'm just kidding. Uh, I just think that you're pretty smart if you're able to figure out how to make a game like Stardew Valley with Angular. Yeah, I mean it's possible, but I don't know if it's like the right path to take 
is, is our is at least my point of view. Would it be possible to import a single angular material component, say if I just need Matt Slider, instead of importing a whole angular material library? I mean, you can already do that today. Um, you, like, you can just import the module for that one, right? Yeah, yeah. You only like you're only getting the code in your bundle for the components you're using. You're yeah, we're tree shaking the rest. Yeah, just because it's all in one package doesn't mean you're getting the whole bundle every time. Yeah, good, 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 good. Arif, love from Bangladesh. What's up? Thanks for coming. Hang out. Yeah. Okay. From a dev, so Rafael Fracon says, from a dev that uses Angular since AngularJS and Ionic 1, and now migrating job apps to Angular 15. I just want to say congratulations for all the efforts and work to make our community better and bigger. You know who else gets a congratulations, congratulations Rafael? You. Because without people like yourself who have stuck with the product, stuck with the team, continue to support your organizations and use Angular, none of this would be possible because we could be building it and nobody could be using it, but you all are using it, which makes it fantastic. So congratulations to you. Thank you for building great apps with Angular. Ooh, KK asks a good question. Am I right that in the future, everything is going to be a signal, including application ref tick? So application ref tick, I don't even know if that will exist in a signal based world, right? Like it that that API. So this this is maybe a long answer, but like that API is very much tied to the notion of like Zone doing a global change detection, and so there probably won't necessarily be like that exact same concept of the um, like application tick in a signal based world. But also, it's important to call out that um, signals are not observables, <laughs> right? Uh, like a, a signal does not represent a stream of events that are happening over time. It is just it represents a, a value at one point in time. And uh, the, the thing we want to very much like really figure out how to caution people against is thinking about uh, like signal is not a replacement for observable, right? It is kind of a different concept and you do have to think about how you use it somewhat differently. Solves a different problem. You know what I want to do so bad, Jeremy, but I can never get the like support for? Uh, I really want to make an RxJS like intro course so bad, but it doesn't make sense for us to do it. I just want to do it because I feel like I have a really good way of explaining it. I have a really good example that I've made. And every time people see my example, they're like, wow, that makes it so much more clear. But, you know, our, am I the best person to be making an RxJS uh, tutorial online? Probably not. Um, hey, guys, for first timer here. What's up, Adil? Uh, loving the stream. Well, we, we love your support. Thank you for coming in and supporting. Just started dipping my feet into Angular. What would you say are the most important Angular concepts to keep in mind as we make my way forward? Adil. Did you know that on the Angular YouTube channel, we have a brand new course that covers just that? You should check it out. Uh, go to the Angular YouTube channel, uh, learning. Uh, do, I, is it, do I even have a link for you, maybe? I even have a link for you. Um, we'll see. Uh, is this it? I mean, I'm checking it out right now. I want to give you a bad link. Nope, I do not have a link for you. <laughs> I should probably make a link. But we have a, a new YouTube course. Uh, idea that you can get some stuff, but you know, you want to learn what the basics of components are. You know, components in Angular are just three parts for the most. You think about it, you got your TypeScript class where your logic goes, you have your template where you put up your markup, and then you have your CSS where you put your styles. So, you want to know about how components work. It'd be great to learn about the router so you can navigate your users from one part of your application to a different part. Uh, the Angular CLI is a great part because it helps you to scaffold your application and build out different things and just make your life really, really smooth. We really uh, put a lot of effort into that. Uh, what else? What's another thing they should probably learn about? Maybe services or something. And, uh, you know, the providers, maybe standalone components. Learn about that. Uh, start learning about signals now that we're uh, releasing the developer preview. So get a few things. Let's see here. Where's my mouse? There it is. Oh, will HTTP ever go back to promises? Uh, that's, like we wouldn't obviously like take the existing HTTP client and just like pull out the RxJS and be like, it's just gone now. Good luck with that. Yeah, that'd be pretty <laughs> um, bad. Right there, there are you know 
for the foreseeable future, we will continue to have and support an uh, ArcGIS based HTTP client. Now that said, like there is definitely a possibility we could have kind of a lower level HTTP client that the ArcGIS one is built on top of that is just based on promises. Um, that could be, you know, uh, used if for whatever reason you wanted to, to not have ArcGIS in your application. Um, but that's just kind of like idle speculation. That's not uh, something we have any concrete plans for. And you could just use fetch if it's not a complex need. I think for more complex HTTP interactions, the HTTP client library makes a ton of sense. But if you have something that doesn't require a lot of customization, a lot of configuration, you just use fetch. That's a hot take. Some people don't like that. There's a Twitter thread because I said use fetch in the course. And people are like, hey, Mark said you can use fetch now. And I was like, wait. No, it's, it's like the thing that I like will always be my, my soapbox is like, there is no one size fits all yeah. solution for everything, right? Like, yeah, fetch is simple and easy to use. And, um, but it doesn't have interceptors, right? And without interceptors, it makes it a little bit more difficult to test. And so it's like, okay, well, if you care about testing, then that's a point where you might want to start to use something that's a little bit more sophisticated, right? Interceptors yeah. are a really powerful feature. All right. Uh, the game that we're working on, this is called, not Terraria, it's called it's Stardew Valley. We're Stardew playing. Valley. That's the game we're playing. Stardew Valley. Okay. So uh, I missed, thanks for clarifying your question. I don't even know if you're still around. You probably asked this like a half hour ago, but there's so many comments and questions. Referencing components directly in templates, just like React. We talked about this. Uh, we're trying to see if it makes sense, if we can do it or not. But, we, you know, it's the conversation, but we don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah, it's it's definitely something we're thinking about. Um, um, nothing like again, like there's there's lots of things we think about and talk about and don't have anything to say like yes, we're doing it yet, right? Like right. you know, it's complicated. We have to think about not only just like you know for for many of these things, if we want to just like build it, it's like yeah, that that's actually the easiest part of the whole thing. It's much harder to think about how do we bring the entire Angular ecosystem along for the ride on that? Can we yeah. you know, migrate existing apps? Are there trade-offs? Um, um, right? How does this make our documentation more complicated? How does this make our examples or our, our tutorials more complicated, right? Um, there's you know, a wide range of effects that we we have to keep in mind as we like push the ecosystem in different directions. All right, yeah, good uh, question. I forget where the saloon okay. is. Here it is. <laughs> All right, so what are your thoughts on Ionic? I'm currently learning it and I'm like, wow, I'm so happy to develop mobile with Angular. I say this every stream, Gabriel, that I think that people should use Ionic and or native script for Angular Mobile because we're not going to make like Angular native uh, or a mobile solution. I mean, so if you think about mobile in general with Angular, if you do a responsive website, you are mobile. Like, so user behavior also changed over the last three years because at one point QR codes were toast, right? Like people weren't even like thinking about them. They were kind of like a passing, like whatever. And now QR codes are like really adapted to you know, user experience and why did I bring that up? Because when you scan the QR code, it no longer takes you to an app store, right? It you takes you to a mobile app that's running on a mobile website. So building a responsive app that works on like screens, you know, mobile screens gets you really far. I like Ionic for building mobile because then they have a really nice UI that makes it look mobile, makes it look and feel mobile, right? So yes, I like it. And I also like native script because if you do need to go native, then you can use native script, right? And you can still use Ionic on native, but I'm saying you got some even more stuff. Okay. Um, hot take time. Because nobody oh, yeah. asked me this. this one right away. You said what? I can answer this one right away. Yeah. Do you have any opinions regarding the inject function versus constructor injection? Which one is your go-to choice? Is there any one of them the team recommended in front of the other? Thank you, guys. Okay. Before you answer, Jeremy, let me tell you why I said it's a hot take. Um, so on the course, there's uh, a developer who left a lot of feedback because they didn't agree with the 
design decisions on the application. And this is one of the areas they didn't agree with the design decisions that we chose to use inject versus constructor, uh, you know, injection with, with dependency injection. So what's your so feedback? The, the direction we are moving towards is uh, preferring the inject function and um, not like and like nothing decided yet, but potentially even like migrating people to the inject function uh, from constructor injection. And there's a number of reasons why for that. Mm. Um, so let me enumerate them. Mm. Um, one is that um, when you have complicated components that are injecting a lot of stuff, that constructor can really get unreadable, right? I've seen it happen in the like angular material components is like, once you pass like four things in there, that constructor is just kind of the big hard to read block of just injectable stuff. Um, two is that it makes using inheritance really complicated. And you have to, if you extend the class, you have to pass up, you have to inject all of the things that the base class depends on and pass them back up. And if you want to make a change to what you're injecting in a class, that now becomes a breaking API change. Whereas with the inject function, if you're using that internally, you can inject or stop injecting things and not have to really worry about it. Um, from a technical standpoint, um, the inject function is doing the same exact thing that the um, that the function is doing. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm still playing starting value while I do this. Um, when you use constructor injection, the uh, Angular compiler is actually just generating an inject call under the hood, right? Like they are literally doing the same thing under the hood. And so there's, from like a technical standpoint, there's not really any difference between the two. And then uh, one other reason is that in uh, standard ECMAScript decorators, now that those have like reached stage three and are like fully on a standards track, um, they do not support parameter decorators um, and the parameter decorators we use for things like optional and skit self, those are now like, you cannot use ECMAScript standard decorators and those in the same file. And we want people to be able to use ECMAScript standard decorators. And yes, there is a proposal for, for adding these, but you know, it's still early on and we don't know how long that will take, you know, these standards can drag on for years. Uh, and so, uh, like overall, we just kind of see the inject function as like a more flexible and less constrained uh, API for accomplishing things. So this is a question for me, Jeremy, about your last point. How are we supporting developers? So as we embrace this idea that we want people to use the uh, ECMAScript decorators, how are we supporting developers when they still have those parameter level decorators? Like how does Angular know the difference? Um, so, I mean, if we do decide to like fully try to push everything to the inject decorator, then we will centrally make a, like an ng update or an ng generate schematic that will migrate the code for you. Obviously, like there are cases where we may not be able to do it 100% of the time, but mm -hmm. it should be like the vast majority of cases should be migratable. But what about the component? So, how, how does Angular know the difference between the component decorator that we have? And the ECMAScript decorator call, like if somebody tried to, to you know, um, clear custom one that call. That it's controlled by your TS config, right? So if you turn on um, experimental decorators in your TS config, you're using the like the older experimental decorators proposal. And if you turn that off, any decorators are like the new standard decorators. And somebody turns it off, does it break their application right now? Um, it can. Yeah. It depends on whether or not you're actually using any parameter decorators. Let's see, what's okay. today's date? Today's uh, fourth day. So I have time to plant cauliflower here. You got a little bit of time, yeah. Uh, I've been saying signals for state RxJS for events. To expand, use signals for local state and RxJS for events that could possibly emit with a very high frequency. Yeah, I mean, because the stream of events over time. So I think that that language becomes more present and more like pervasive in the conversation because before you didn't have to think about it like that, it was just RCS for everything is what people were using it for, right? It was just like, okay, it'll be our state, it'll be everything. And now that we have something to solve for this, you know, similar issue or to solve for your state, then it really does make sense to start thinking about it as like 
a stream of events or a stream of something that happens over time, like that materializes over time. And when you think about it like that, it can give you that clarification that you're looking for. But good, good, uh, Tayama, good, good job. Okay, Agustras, oh, one says, uh, using SSR seems to require data to be preloaded in something like resolvers to render it out nested route components. This creates some blocking uh, a, uh, blocking IO issues, in my opinion. Have you run into this already, uh, Alcatraz? Uh, any chance to make it so HTTP requests can be made at the component level outside on init and still render properly SSR similar to other frameworks? Uh, I don't 100% follow the question. Um, right, like you during server side rendering, like you have to fetch your data somehow, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, um, I, I, I don't quite follow what the like the comparison is. Yeah, I'm gonna follow up on this though, just because I think I follow, but I don't know the answer. But I'm gonna talk to the folks working on this, and then see, uh, see what we can do. So, yeah, I'll try to just forge your comment internally. To see if anybody, you know, uh, to the team working on that, just to see if that's in, you know something they can help with. All right, how to create this game? Yeah, spend some time. Uh, <laughs> spend ten years. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's what the original dev did to make this. So, uh, front end developer, we need to know about algorithms and stuff to find the longest palindrome in a string and stuff like that. Uh, Dennis, you know, is that rush hour? Oh, uh, your yes, it is rush hour. I like that. Chris Tucker says something in that movie. He says a lot of lines. So I was re-watching the trailer. And I was just like, there are some of these lines that I'm sure he improv. And Jackie Chan had to like keep like, you know, stay in character as Chris Tucker says it's like random stuff. Because I'm like, there's no writer who wrote this down. Like, okay, Chris busts in and says, MC Hammer Daddy, put the gun down. Like, right. Like Chris Tucker had to have made that up in a moment. Cause I don't think a writer would, would have told him to call somebody MC Hammer's daddy. Anyway. Long story short, uh, do you need to know about algorithms? Yeah, performance. Well, algorithms can help increase performance when you can find the right one, right? Yeah. So, so don't need like, algorithms. Yeah, I feel like this question comes up mainly because people uh, are thinking about interviews, right? It's like, oh, yeah. part of interview prep, the classic thing is like, oh yeah, prepare for all <laughs> these like classic, whoops, I don't mean to fish with this lady. Um, Prepare, you know, like the, the problem you're describing, like longest palindrome of string and stuff like that. And it's not really like no one is expecting you to just memorize all these things, right? Uh, it's really about uh, problem solving and willingness to engage with a problem and how you think through it and solve it. And like, yeah, learning a lot of problems like this can kind of train you on how to think about problems and how to dissect them in what are common approaches and things like that. But uh, even if you are not going to be, you know, finding palindromes or doing shortest paths or minimum spanning trees in your day-to-day -day life, it's not so much about that. It's about how do you dissect a problem? Okay, I'm just getting some feedback uh, internally about that question that was asked. Okay, let's see. Will we ever have server components in Angular Universal? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Right. I said the exact same thing with the exact same tone, tonality. Um, so to go back to Alcatraz's question, uh, yeah, so it's something that we're aware of. We know that it's needed. It's on the roadmap. It's something we're thinking about, and it's on a roadmap. That's the most I can tell you. I can't tell you anything else. And that came directly from the team who's working on it. Don't tell me anything else. Sorry. Uh, but that's what we can tell you. Ooh, will Angular integrate the new transition API for animations? Uh, I'm not sure it's actually necessary to integrate anything, right? It's just CSS. So to, to my knowledge, it should just work. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the things I'll tell people about Angular uh, when I was doing office hours. They're just like, oh, what about this? What about that? And I was like, you know, honestly, it's HTML and CSS. So when new APIs uh, for CSS come in, you can just use them. Yeah. Like this is a thing. We don't have to implement anything. It's whatever works in a browser. I, I've seen this even as far back as like the AngularJS days, you know, back in like 2014. 
but people get a little bit caught up in like, what's the angular way to do X, right? It's like, what's the yeah. angular way to have a link? What's the angular way to do an animation? What's the angular way to add two numbers, right? Yeah, so, right, right, right. There doesn't need to be an angular way to do everything, right? At the end of the day, it's just like JavaScript, HTML, CSS on the page, and you can use all the normal stuff that you have access to. Hector, I know you've been watching our YouTube shorts. <laughs> Good call out. I like that. Uh, I made a bunch of videos with Emma, and it said Angular 15 is here, and it is awesome. And that's how the video started out. That's funny. I like that call out. Nice job. Oh, here's a just a good question from an education point of view from PV. It says, why are components, the, the writers and pipes called declarables? Um, declarables? Do we actually use that term anywhere? I don't know. But like, like in an ng module, right, it is has a property called declar or I think it's like declarations or def yeah, it's declarations, right? Um, and so that basically that's saying is like those are the things that are declared in this ng module. I don't think that conversationally we ever call them declarables. I see. Well, this is a tough fish. Okay. Uh, we got a few minutes left, so let's start rapid firing some questions. Uh, hey, Mark and Jeremy, not Josh, Jeremy, uh, when do we need to use parameters in computed and effect? Um, what parameters? I would say, yeah, I don't think you use parameters because yeah, so, you don't call computed directly. Like, you don't invoke it with, like, a function call. I mean, you invoke it because it's a function, but yeah. Yeah, so, like, the par first parameter to a computed is the actual, like, the function that produces the results, yeah. right? So you always pass that parameter to compute it. And similar for effect, right? The first parameter to the effect function is the, the callback. And so you always provide that. And then there are maybe, I think, second parameters for both of those that are options. Um, and you can use those when you need that option. Hey, congratulations, H4SSY. In my final year of BSC computing, congratulations. It's a lot of work. You finished a 10-month internship. Excellent work. Uh, you did it on Angular. Glad. You said that people say it isn't beginner-friendly here in Nepal, but I don't agree. I'm glad you don't agree because we've worked really hard with making it more beginner-friendly. I've worked really hard on that effort as, as well. That's something I've been talking to people about, so it's good. Um, I'm glad you feel that way. Okay, I see. Uh, Okay, so remember that effect question about after init? I got an error in G0203 effect. Can oh, only be yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I remember now. Um, yes, it can only be used in an injection context. Um, uh, that means the constructor for the time being, I think there may be a way in uh, you can inject the injector and like run something in an injection context if you want to do that in NG on init. But for now, right, the like the idea is if you want to have some callback when you are, you know, observing your signal state and running something there, you should be able to set that up in the constructor because you should have your signals known at that point. Okay, so let's see a lot of more questions. Okay, this is a good one. Uh, the Angular new way to catch route parameters is awesome, but why you guys didn't introduce a new decorator like at route instead of at input? Uh, oh, oh, I get it. I get I it. Yeah, because, I know what you're saying. like routed in, you could have like route input or something like that, right? Because for people uh watching, we so we added support for binding route properties, route data to inputs, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it just kind of, I don't know that there's just a need for having another type of input, so to speak, or even an option on inputs, right? It seemed like the, the feature request that most people were looking for was to have route params automatically connected to component inputs in the way that they are now. Yeah. Oh, any plans to compile Angular down to WebAssembly? Uh, for what purpose? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Angular is already JavaScript. It runs in the browser already. We don't need to make it uh, two megabytes <laughs> to, alt to continue running in the browser. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, that let's is, see. Kind of like the big, you know, challenge with WebAssembly today is that when you do produce something with WebAssembly, it ends up being uh, significantly larger than if you were to just kind of do something comparable in just JavaScript. So check this out. Jihad says the inject function was a lifesaver for me. It helped me clean up the mess from calling my common API class from many locations before I had to fix the constructor calls in every inheriting class, which is what Jeremy talked about. So we have some uh, testimonial here that the inject function does kind of help inc uh, increase some code clarity and also just some code brittleness. Let's see. Uh, I couldn't see that injectable decorator i didn't serve really serve a purpose if we admitted arguments to the decorator as long as we use the inject function is it redundant uh the injectable decorator gives angular the angular compiler some information that it needs to know that that class uh, needs to be treated a special way because it is injectable right so that decorator is more for angular than it is for you <laughs> i see but if somebody omits the injectable decorator uh, on a class which tries to inject it with the inject function will that work it shouldn't <laughs> <laughs> okay marcus let us know if, if you did it you got it to work without it um oh 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 mun mun meow says are there any plans to improve the type inference of ng templates uh we're you know there are areas where the type checking could be tightened up a little bit more. We don't have any plans to actively work on that in the short term, but there are always improvements we, you know, could be thinking about making. Okay. And not actively, but um, potentially in the future. Josh says, I have a feeling Jeremy wrote the code for that error. He knew it instantly. <laughs> uh, I haven't written any of the signals code. I don't really code that much anymore. Uh, I, the most coding I do is on these streams, honestly. Isn't that funny? Um, Gabriel says, taking talking in Angular way, how would you name the export interface file? Okay, this is a hot take because me and Jeremy are squarely uh -huh. Uh, opposed in our opinions of how this goes. Yeah, so this is name dot interface name dot model name dash interface dot model. Which one? Or none. My my opinion on this is none of them. Um, so I am of the opinion that you shouldn't like. I I would like to change the Angular style guide to eliminate the guidance on having the the type of construct in the file name. Um, obviously, like you can still do it if you want, but I don't think that that should be the default recommendation uh, because I think that you can use names that convey the purpose or the responsibility of the class without needing that, right? And um, inside of Google, we actually don't use this pattern at all, right? You don't do the like dot component dot ts or dot service dot ts, and it's not a problem at all, right? People don't have a hard time uh, knowing what something is. I will allow you to make that argument and I will still disagree. I like to know what the file is because then if I do some gro some grokking on the file name, I can get all my interfaces. And if I just look, I know it's an interface. But let's say we have like a home component. You got a home interface, home.ts based on a file directory, you know, like a file structure to me feels worse because I don't know. How do I know which one is the component and which one is the interface? Uh, don't name the interface the same thing. <laughs> but it represents a home object that will be displayed in the home component. Right. So you could name, like, instead of having home component, it could be something like, you know, home view or home display or home details, right? Like, there mm. are more specific words you can use than component because just having component doesn't tell you okay. anything about what that component is actually doing. Oh, okay. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to deny that you make a compelling argument. <laughs> I forgot that we named this person Doom Guy. <laughs> um, yeah, that's my, that's my guiding light when it comes to naming things is like, be as specific as possible, right? Like, you, you want to really capture the, either the responsibility or the purpose of any given, you know, class or file or whatever. Uh, 
that is going to be more useful than just you know calling it component or service, right? Like the word service doesn't mean anything, right? Like yeah, I, have I know it. Yeah, that's true. User that's true. service. It's like what does user service do? I have no idea, right? Service could be anything. Whereas if I have like user data client, oh, I know a lot more about what that class does now. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay, that's fair. I'm still not agreeing completely. I won't concede that it's completely, you know, like, right. I will say you make a good point, though. Um, <laughs> Victor says home slash component slash home dot component dot TS. All right, Victor, stop it. Uh, wait, Marcus just said it does work. If you use the inject function, it was needed before when a service injected and in, in another service in, the, in its constructor. If the same service is now imported, with the inject function, it works just fine. Now I'm gonna have to try it, Marcus, because you know y'all be out here hacking Angular. Stop it. Okay, let's see. Vl Vladislav says, "Just landed my first job as a junior front end developer. Congratulations! Well done, well done. Starting the career the right way with the Angular framework. Any good advice? Yeah, uh, do what your team does." Follow best practices from your team if you're going to work on Angular stuff because one of the big values that we find is that teams set really strong patterns because of the kind of things that we set up at first with the structures. So you want to like follow what your team does, even if they do name their files, you know, app.component.ts. You still follow what they do. Uh, anything to do in general? Uh, I would tell you this, Vladislav, uh, for your first career job, which is really fantastic, um, don't stop learning. I don't, I don't subscribe to, oh, you got to be doing a side project on the side and everything else. Like, I just say, don't stop learning. Like, stay abreast of what's happening in the industry so you can help, you know, always know. I'm not saying chase the edge, just know what's happening. Keep improving learn. your skills, keep practicing. Yeah, and learn different stuff. Yep. Right? Like, go, go learn some stuff about, like, database systems or whatever. It's, uh, I, I found that if you go and try to learn about areas of programming or even completely unrelated things like woodworking uh you will uh find your brain making connections in a way that you wouldn't have otherwise made totally agree mm -hmm. i harvested my parsnips mark you gotta okay. wait so what are you gonna do with them i already so i already put them in the box to sell them Oh, okay. So you just drop these in the box. Jeremy, this is not related to to Angular. Do you have a preferred luggage brand? Luggage? Mm -hmm. When I travel, I use a Google swag duffel bag that I got in college and that has held up for about 12 years. Oh, okay. I, I travel super light. Um, even if I'm gone for like three weeks, I just I bring a single duffel bag. Oh, okay. Uh, min minimalist traveler. Yeah, I'm. I'm actually pretty good about traveling light. I, uh, but the thing is, I because I usually can I can do up to like a, a week or eight days with a carry on because I dress like a minimalist, so it doesn't really matter, right? I have a, a few black t-shirts, a few pairs of jeans, but I usually have to bring at least one extra pair of shoes for being. Ooh, I got um, some gold. And stuff. So, all right. I just asked because I need to buy a suitcase because my current suitcase, the wheels are are uh, falling apart. Even though the suitcase is new, it was kind of cheap. And mm. I'm paying the price. Sometimes I wonder if just getting like vintage stuff is better because all of like the mass produced stuff today is just feels like it's never as high as a quality as it used to be. Yeah, you know, cheaper and faster, man. Okay, friends, we got like a few. Oh, Team Samsonite. Hey, Marcus, you must be Team Rich because Samsonite is not cheap. So I appreciate you. I see you in these streets. Costco has the best suitcases. Can't tell me otherwise. Josh. Oh, wait, this one's still on the screen. Sorry. Um, all right. All right. Uh, my wife loves Costco. So if I tell her I want to go to Costco to buy a new suitcase, she's going to be like, yes. Let's go right now. That'll be a date night. We'll go to Costco. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I've been working with Angular 13 since last year. Should I migrate to Angular 15? You should migrate to Angular yeah. 16 if you can. Please get on the latest version. 
Yeah, get them the latest version. Get the fresh, the latest, freshest stuff. We're not like, and so well, I, I said it joking, but I'm actually re really serious. So I think well, the way that we do things with Angular, we really don't release like heavy breaking changes that you can't upgrade your app through, right? And we really try to, re you know, uh, release features that are like super beneficial to the community. So definitely get out there and get to Angular uh, V16 uh, if you can't get to the to the, the latest. Okay, Moon Moon has another question. Mun Mun says, will generic templates be supported in the future? It may be. Oh, interesting. Like app root with the gen he like generics passed in. Um, view has already launched, it's supported. It's just all the problem of ng template type. So you this shouldn't be necessary in Angular because Angular type system will infer generics automatically, right? So taking, for example, Matt Date Picker. Matt Date Picker, the type of the date in that is a generic um, like D. And if you bind like a native date object into it, Angular is able to infer that that is like, oh yeah, that's native date. And it can propagate the type checking throughout. Or if you use like a moment or a Luxon date, it will do the same thing. So yeah. um, because like this is actually um, a, a benefit of Angular's class-based authoring system uh, or our authoring format is that you have the generic on the component and that information is kind of part and parcel of the template. Um, mm. Cell. Oh, Jeremy, I'm on to something. I just did a quick Google search just to find out. And I can replace my suit, my luggage wheels because the luggage itself is still in really good shape. The wheels have just not, has just seen better days. Oh yeah, you gotta repair, right? Always repair if you can. Yeah, um, I didn't even think about that. I was like, let me just buy some new luggage. But the getting some new wheels might be uh something I can do. I'm gonna do a live stream where I change the wheels on my luggage to rollerblade wheels. Um, let's see, what day is it? Okay, I still got all right. Uh Jeremy, how long much longer you want to go? Because we are about five minutes left on the stream. We can continue yeah. or we can go for our five last minutes. Okay. Um, I'll plant some more cauliflower here. Yeah, plant some more cauliflower. All right, let's see. Uh, is somewhere legit front end certificate to get something like AWS a certificate worth mentioning in your CV? Honestly, Elizor, I don't know. I don't know the answer about AWS certificates. Yeah. Uh, certificates on your CV? Sure. If you did it, right? If you got certified, put it on there. But don't put it on there if you got certified but didn't learn anything. Because I always feel like if I look at your CV and you put it on there, that means I can ask you about it. That is one rule that I do follow. So I tell people, don't put anything on your CV that I can't ask you about and like potentially give you interview questions about. Uh, let's see. Well, Kevin has a good point. Just you luggage without wheels and builds more character. Hey. That's exactly what I'm doing because I was in Miami airport and it's carpet most of the way. And it was miserable dragging the suitcase with like a broken wheel that was like sticking. It was miserable. I hated it. Every part of that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Which would be the must read pages for you to learn about Angular. We have a must read page uh, that we're thinking about. So it's coming soon. I can't say anything else. Mark, what if I take a half day and just keep playing Stardew Valley when we finish? Yo, let's take a half day. I'm fine with that. Let's take a half day. It's so, it's so nice out here. I'm in Seattle and it's just like, it's gorgeous out. It's going to be like 79 degrees. I'm just like. Jeremy, I could be there for dinner if I left right now for the airport. I could be there for dinner and we could just like hang out on like a restaurant with a nice like patio, get some good pizza or something and like play uh, Zelda. Yeah. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> you know, like, man, it actually sounds pretty good now that I think about it. Like, that sounds like a fun, like, evening. Yeah, you're, um, you're the one with parental responsibilities. That's true. That's <laughs> true. He, well, he cannot come because, no. <laughs> that little. Um, see, considering upgrade from Angular 10 to 16 for a project, do you make it, recommend this? Yes. Yes. I know what you should do, Ephraim. Go to update.angular.io and then upgrade step by step because a lot has changed since angular 10. yeah it's typically i think we typically recommend to like 
if you're like on 10, right? It's like, go to 11, make sure it works, check it in, yep. go to 12, make sure it works, check it in, just keep doing that. Yeah, it's the best thing. Uh, Josh says, I'm logging off. Thanks so much for taking the time, Mark and Jeremy. Enjoy y'all's Memorial Weekend. You too, Josh. Good to have you come on the stream. Welcome to the party. Oh, uh, yes. NGX dash Stardew Dash Valley. I like you. I like that you're embracing our new self closing component tag like uh, stuff. I like that you're embracing it. Thank you for embracing that. I need to update the Angular course. So, you all asked me about this Angular course for months, and I finally released it. And nobody's asked me about it. Nobody's given me any like ideas about what they need. Is it good? Is it bad? What y'all need from it? Um, but yeah. So you know what people do want, Jeremy? And speaking of courses, now they want an intermediate and advanced course. Oh mm. well, we get, we got lots of things to do. Yeah, I would say we got plenty. That's the one thing about this job. I am never sitting at my desk saying, "What else can I do." It's usually what shouldn't I be doing, and so I can focus on something else because there's no like shortage of things that I I can do at, uh, working at Google. <laughs> Michael says I literally screamed when I read the change log added self closing tags. Um, <laughs> good, um, guys. Where you go? Do I have? Oh, I have an issue on the Angular language service. I lose auto completion frequently. I have to restart it. Any idea about what could be the reason? Not off the top of our heads, but definitely yeah. if you can try to capture as many details as possible and file a bug with a reproduction, that's the best way to try to fix it. Please do that. Seriously. Please do that. File a bug. And then, yeah, we can tell you that. All right, should Angular guy go full stack using Java backend? Oh, that's a good, interesting question. Free time coding. Should you do full stack uh, using Java as a backend? Sure. Why not? Uh, yeah, we we Angular's you know totally agnostic to what your backend is, right? Like different companies are gonna have different infrastructure, and different people are gonna have different preferences, and so. There's really like no hard requirement to use one thing or another. There's, you know, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. There's no one right answer for everyone. Right, that's a good point. Could you name some design patterns that are worth to use in Angular? I'm always getting this question on in interviews. Yeah, uh, see, this is a weird, I, I feel like this is maybe a weird way of thinking about it because it's like design patterns are, for solving certain problems, right? right. Um, it, like, like I don't know, I can just start naming design patterns off the top of my head, but right, it's like, it's more about the problem you're trying to solve and not the framework or the tools that you're using. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm with you on that. It's a good point. Oh, okay. I uh, says so the type is lost when using MG template outlet context. And every time I use it to pass data, I always, <laughs> I guess, I'm having a hard time with that one. Yeah, I, I would say that like, there's no concrete plans to work on that in the immediate future, but we would as like, you know, like to tighten up the types as much as possible, you know, as time goes on. So uh, I would say not right now, but maybe at some point. Uh, when will it come out? I don't know, Yvonne, because I have to write it. <laughs> and, I, and I just completed this other one, and we're still making uh, slight updates to it. And we'll probably have to re, we'll probably have to update the current uh, course, the intro course. We'll probably have to update that again because we have signals coming. And so we got to write it. And then I also would have to figure out what's needed. So I understand really clearly with, with a lot of clarity what beginning developers need for Angular. I think there's some time needed for research to figure out what what would an advanced course people need. So there are probably some really good advanced courses out there that you could probably just take now, um, Pluralsight or some other of those light learning platforms that'll serve you pretty good. Uh, while we figure out what would it make sense for us to create, you know, from like a learning platform's uh, point of view. That's a bit of a harder question, even though it probably seems pretty straightforward, but what is advanced? Right. What does advanced mean in your domain? Because there are some people who are using some really, really like advanced features or advanced patterns. I want to say advanced features, advanced patterns in Angular. 
that we hadn't even considered and people are doing some stuff and then there's some stuff that makes sense. So yeah, lots to think about. Lots to think about. Uh, sorry to ask, when is Firebase team considering upgrading Angular Fire to support Angular 16 and standalone schematic using ng add? Uh, I can talk about the first problem. They are talking about it. I just talked to them about this. So they're working on it. And then the second thing is a little bit more tricky. Can we say anything about the second part of this, the ng add schematic? Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll err on the side of caution here. I won't say anything. Yeah, I, I don't I, I don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know some stuff, but I still know I can say it. Well, I can say it. So therefore. There you go. Good questions. Jeremy, it's 1231, brother. All right. That's we're it. out of time. Woo, good stream though. Great questions, everybody. You all were fantastic. Thank you for all the questions. Jeremy, what should people tell people what they should check out uh between now and the next stream? Uh, I mean, the only thing I'm checking out is Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, <that's> <laughs> uh, I would say check out the new Angular course uh, and share sure with your developer friends who are new to Angular. Check that out. Check out our V16 live stream that we recently did, which we thought was super awesome. And we had a really great time. Update to V16. Really like do that. And then. Anything personal I think you should check out? What do I like right now? Uh, I ju Oh, I just finished a series. I just finished a series called Night Agent on Netflix. It was it started off a little like predictable and it's still predictable kind of through, but it gets a, it's entertaining enough to get you past the predictability to give it a, a shot at the second season. So check that out. Check that out. Oh, and definitely watch from on MGM Plus if you like supernatural, mystery, like horror, like Lost meets Walking Dead kind of uh, type of situation. Okay, friends, I think that's enough recommendations. Do us a big, big, big favor. Like this, this stream. Get the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't. We need you to subscribe if you haven't, please. Uh, you all be well, be safe back at you. I see all your thank yous and goodbyes and do us uh, just a, the thing you've been doing. Get out there and go build great app. Catch you next time.